Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New East in Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8th, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East in Augusta. The poster girl of the 20 grand challenge problems is the petroleum reservoir simulation of a production oil field that may be two miles below the surface of the earth and the size of a town. The reason one in ten supercomputers were purchased by the petroleum industry was that the parallel processed petroleum reservoir simulator helps the oil company to discover and recover as much crude oil and natural gas as is possible and to recover them as long as possible as well as to compute them at a supercomputer speed that was previously believed to exist only in the realm of science fiction. The speed increase of a factor of 65,536 that I recorded on July 4, 1989 was dismissed as, a science, as science fiction and I was disinvited from giving my lecture on how I discovered Practical Parallel Supercomputing My discovery of the Practical Parallel Supercomputing was rejected as quote-unquote a serious mistake. After two months of continuous rejections of my discovery of massively parallel supercomputing, I went in search of reconfirmation of my discovery, I was compelled to provide expert eyewitnesses to my discovery of the practical parallel supercomputing. My first step was at a 15-day long supercomputer workshop that took place from September 1 to 15, 1989 and in Chicago, United States. During that supercomputer workshop, I spent the first 15 days building the trust and confidence of the supercomputer workshop instructors and participants who at that time did not know who I was. From my contributions to the workshop discussions on how to record the fastest speeds within the parallel supercomputer, the instructors realized that I had been supercomputing for the past 15 years and that they knew less than I did. On the 15th and last day of that supercomputer workshop, I suddenly cleared my throat and made the announcement that brought me to Chicago, namely that I've discovered practical parallel processing. You could hear a a pin drop in the room as everybody gazed at me in stunned silence. For the first time since June 20, 1974 in Corvallis, Oregon, United States, a group of supercomputer scientists attentively listened to me as I explained to them how I discovered how to massively parallel process across 65,536 processors that each operated its own operating system. I discovered how to reduce the calculation time of the 20 grand challenge problems of supercomputing. I discovered how to reduce that time to solution and do so with a speed up of 65,000 536. 
Before September 15, 1989, my speed up of 65,536 days or 108 years of time to solution to just one day existed only in the realm of science fiction. For me, Philip Emma Aguale, that Eureka moment in Chicago was surreal. After my announcement at that supercomputer workshop of my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing, it was so quiet that you could hear a pin drop in the room. The supercomputer scientists attending that Chicago workshop challenged me to submit my discovery to the highest authority in supercomputing. That highest authority was the Computer Society of the IEEE. The IEEE is the acronym for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. In late December 1989, the Computer Society reconfirmed my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing. The Computer Society invited me to come to the forthcoming International Computer Conference that will take place on February 28, 1990 in San Francisco, California. Two months prior to that conference, the Computer Society of the IEEE sent out a press release that, rec that recognized my contributions to quote-unquote practical parallel processing. In their press release, the Computer Society announced that I have won the highest award in the field of supercomputing. I'm well known, but not known well. I'm well known for inventing a new internet that is a new supercomputer de facto and that is a new global network of 65,536 processors that were tightly coupled to each other and that shared nothing between each other. I'm well known for figuring out how to harness the processors within that new internet and how to use that new knowledge to solve initial boundary value problems arising in mathematical physics that were otherwise impossible to solve. But I am not known well for foreseeing my discovery as de facto a new internet. I'm well known for experimentally discovering or recording speeds in floating point arithmetical computations that were previously unrecorded. But I am not known well for using email communications across that new internet to record communication speeds that were previously unrecorded. But I am not known well for discovering or seeing for the first time those supercomputer speeds and recording them across my new internet. But I am not known well for changing the way we look at the modern computer and the modern supercomputer. After the 4th of July 1989, I became known for the experimental discovery of parallel supercomputing. That discovery made the news headlines because it was beyond theory and beyond the computer and because it was specific, quantifiable, and measurable. Every new technology has a starting point. Parallel processing is the starting point of the modern supercomputer. 
in the 1970s and 80s, the supercomputer hopeful technology called parallel processing was mocked, ridiculed, and dismissed as a huge waste of everybody's time. Today, parallel processing is universally used to reduce the time to solution of the toughest problems arising in the field of supercomputing. Parallel processing is used to increase the speed of the fastest computers and all supercomputers. My discovery of practical parallel processing was how I entered as a benchmark into the history of the development of the computer and the internet. In U.S. public libraries, I see 12-year-olds writing school reports on the contributions of Philip Emma Aguale to the development of the computer. I entered into school curricula after my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing. That discovery occurred on the 4th of July, 1989 in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States. My discovery of practical parallel supercomputing made the news headlines because it was new knowledge that changed the way we look at the supercomputer. My discovery of practical parallel supercomputing was recorded in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal. At its core essence, parallel supercomputing is about one billion processors computing together to solve one big problem. Parallel supercomputing is the vanguard of computer science. The parallel supercomputer is the engine that is used to discover new knowledge and solve grand challenge problems arising in STEM fields. My contribution to the development of the computer is this. I discovered that we can parallel process and solve grand challenge problems arising in mathematics and physics and solve them across a new impact Internet, that is a new global network of commodity of the shelf processors that shared nothing between them. I paradigm shifted from computing only one thing at a time or in sequence to supercomputing one million things at once or in parallel. I was the first person to solve a grand challenge problem and solve it by dividing it into smaller problems and communicating them via emails to 65,536 processors. I was the first person to solve as many as 65,536 parallel processed initial boundary value problems of mathematical physics and solve them at once. My discovery, called practical parallel processing, is the vital technology that must be used to solve the toughest problems arising in science and engineering and used to solve them in minimum time. When I began sequential supercomputing on June 20, 1974, at age 19, Parallel supercomputing then only existed in the realm of science fiction. For the 67 years, for the 67 years, onward of February 1, 1922, parallel supercomputing only existed as an urban legend of the mathematical physics community. My parallel supercomputing experiment made the news headlines back in 1989. But my discovery of the fastest computer speed was not newsworthy for pushing the boundaries of how fast supercomputers could compute. 
My discovery was newsworthy because I discovered the fastest speeds across a new internet that I described as a new global network of 65,536 processors that tightly encircled a globe. That discovery enabled the supercomputer to be true to its vital technology that is named parallel processing. Parallel processing revolutionized the field of supercomputing by giving it new horizons that ranges from the mathematician's blackboard to the engineer's drawing board. The serial processed weather forecast is unpredictable. We parallel process the grand challenge problem of weather forecasting to make unpredictable weather predictable. The speed of a computer can be increased by packing more transistors on chips and or, and or putting more central processing units and graphics processing units and using them as identical cores and nodes of a global network of processing units that are equal distances apart and that are on the surface of a globe. Why is the supercomputer of today much faster than the supercomputer of 1988 and earlier? The modern supercomputer is faster because its underlying parallel processing units did the supercomputing. The processor is the brain of the computer. In the modern computer, the serial kernel of an application code is computed within a few central processing units that each computed only one thing at a time. In the modern supercomputer, the parallel kernel of an application code is parallel computed within the graphics processing unit that computed many things at once or in parallel. The graphics processing unit is a parallel processing tool that is used by the central processing unit to perform faster computations, just like the central processing unit is a sequential processing tool that is used by the sequential processing human computer to perform faster computations. The graphics processing unit is a massively parallel machine and its presence inside your computer redefined your computer as parallel processing. The graphics processing unit computes in parallel or computes many things at once. The graphics processing unit computes the computation intensive kernel of your application and did so when that kernel could be parallelized. The few cores within the central processing unit serially computed the portion of the computation intensive physics code that could not be parallelized if the central processing unit is the brain of your computer, then the graphics processing unit is the soul of your computer. The word computer was coined 2,000 years ago when it was first used by the Roman author Pliny the Elder. For 2,000 years, the word computer referred to a human computer that computes manually rather than to a programmable electronic machine that computes automatically. When the mid-20th century British logician Alan Turing and his contemporaries wrote about the quote-unquote computer, they meant a human computer, not an electronic machine that computes. The meaning of the word computer changed in 1946 
when the terminology, quote unquote, programmable digital computer was shortened to computer. For my 1989 discovery of practical parallel processing, the technology that underpins every modern supercomputer, I had to redefine the programmable digital computer. I redefined the technology because I discovered how to divide a grand challenge problem into smaller problems and how to solve them across my new internet that is a new global network of 65,536 processors. Each processor operated its own operating system. As predicted in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal, my experimental discovery of practical parallel processing opened the door to the modern supercomputer technology that is harnessed and used to solve real-world problems and solve them across central processing units that accelerate their speeds of computation and do so with identical graphics processing units. As a supercomputer scientist that came of age in the, mid, in the 1970s and 80s, I thought of the supercomputer differently. Conventional supercomputer scientists program vector supercomputers and believe that and believe that the fastest computations could only be recorded on one central processing unit that's a vector unit. In the old paradigm of supercomputing, the thought of the supercomputer in the singular sense of solving only one problem at a time. In my new paradigm of supercomputing, I thought of the supercomputer in the plural sense of 65,536 identical central processing units and as many identical graphics processing units. Back in 1989, I was in the news headlines because I experimentally discovered how to use those units to solve 65,536 problems at once. My discovery opened the door to the present technology of using graphics processing units where possible and using them to accelerate the speed of the floating point arithmetical operations that must be executed by the modern parallel supercomputer. My experimental discovery of how to parallel process and do so to solve the toughest problems, and do so across a new global network of 65,536 processors was achieved across a new internet. The supercomputer of today will become the computer of tomorrow. The supercomputer is at once able to define our past recreate our present, and reinvent our future. The supercomputer technology called massively parallel processing that was mocked as a very useless technology is now the front and the center of high-performance computing and is rapidly moving into laptops and desktops. Until the 4th of July, 1989, Parallel processing was not verified by any experiment that was conducted across an ensemble of thousands of processors and that used a real-world grand challenge problem as its computational testbed. My contribution to the development of the modern computer is this. On the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, I provided the lockdown experimental evidence 
that the technology of massively parallel supercomputing can be harnessed and used to solve the toughest problems arising from mathematics to medicine and from science to engineering. I alone conducted that time-consuming experimentation that led to my discovery of the best way to get millions of processors to solve the toughest problems and to move humongous data into and out of storage and to solve them in harmony and as one seamless cohesive supercomputer. The electricity budget of the email messaging that is a precondition to moving data into and out of millions upon millions of processors raises the electricity bill to up to $40 million per year and eventually costs more than the next world's fastest supercomputer that will cost the United States $600 million in the year 2023. The world's fastest computer consumes as much electricity as 2 million Nigerians. Thank you. Insightful and brilliant lecture.